Hello and welcome back to another episode of Your Drone Questions Answered. I'm John Dicko with the Drone Launch Academy here to find the answers to your drone questions. These are drone questions that you submit yourselves. Today's question is from retired Lieutenant Colonel Keith Pritchett. He's the JROTC instructor at a high school in Alabama. His question is, what remote ID modules do you recommend for my school's older drones, specifically the Mini 2 and Mavic 2? Pro. So today to answer that question, I have David Young, founder of Drone Launch Academy with me. Thank you, David, for being with me again today. You bet. Thanks for having me on. And more fun about remote ID. Actually, no, Keith, he does some of our uh, high school curriculum that our company has. He's been working on it with his cadets. He actually asked me this the other day. So I told him, you know what, let's just do a podcast episode about it because I'm sure a lot of other people have the same question. And it has changed a lot. I know you and I did a podcast episode sort of on this topic like eight months ago. And mm -hmm. even since then, there have been more options. Like eight months ago, you couldn't even find a remote ID module, basically. Now, the world has changed a bit and we have some. So let me give you my top three. This is what I would recommend to him. So Keith, if you're listening to this, <laughs> these are the top three I'd recommend. I selected them based on price. The reality is most people who want to comply with remote ID or do remote ID are just doing it so they don't get in trouble. Like... He doesn't want to be doing an official school function. Like he has students that are licensed pilots and they'll fly like to do parking for like football games and stuff. So he doesn't want to be flying one of those drones. Something happens, they crash or hit something. And then it's like, oh, wait, you didn't have remote ID on these and he gets in trouble. You know, you, that's what you're trying to avoid. I just want to check the box of compliance, say, yes, I'm compliant. I want it to be cheap and I want it to be easy, right? That's usually, that's kind of the criteria I'm going for. So these top three are cheap. They're like plug and play. You stick them on the drone and turn them on and they are compliant. So they, they meet the FAA's standards. There are other remote ID modules out there that are like expensive that can integrate with these software systems so you can see where all your company's drones are at once. No, we don't need any of that crap. This is just basic. Okay. So Sounds here good. are the three with, without further ado. The best one that I have found good trusted reviews on is ZRID. It's made by a company Zing Drones. This company is actually a drone delivery company. They're trying to stand up some stuff in drone delivery. I think they hopped on the remote ID train. They're like, hey, we can make these modules. So it's a hundred bucks, $99.99. It's called ZRID Lite, $100. It's battery powered. Again, no fuss. Some of them you have to plug cables into. No, this is just, you could charge it up once you're done charging it. You just Velcro it to the top of the drone and turn it on. That's it. So it's got about a four hour battery life. It does broadcast for Bluetooth. It's approved by the FAA, all good. So hundred bucks, go to zingdrones.shop. They are not paying me to say this is not, I have no connection to them. So that's the number one that I found, okay? Number two, that I, that I would say is recommended. It was a little bit harder to find, okay? It's made by a company called Blue Mark Innovations. You can go to bluemark.io, but they don't even sell it on their website. I'm pretty sure they're not a non-US company. They only work through drone like resellers. So you can go to your country, find your country, find where to do it. I found one website called 107RID, like part 107, so 107RID.com. They sell the Drone Beacon DB120. It's a remote ID module. It doesn't look as nice and sleek, but it works. It's a little clunkier. It is originally $150, but on this website, I found it for uh, 99 bucks. They have a $50 deal going on for some reason. But on the other websites I found, they're like on dronefly.com as well. They're about $150. Again, it's approved. It's similar. You stick it on, you turn it on, and uh, you know, you're good to go. Battery life. I said it's about three hours, but this is another option, just in all fairness. And then the last one I'd recommend is a company that's a bit more established in the uh, remote ID world. It's called Drone Tag. And the Drone Tag Beacon is another popular one. It looks a little bit more like nicely packaged and put together. But that one's $219. I've heard other people using this one. It works well, seems good. Again, we don't get anything from recommending them. Their CEO actually did come on to our Drone Launch Connect community one time answer questions. So I know that they have good, you know, customer support and all that stuff. But 120 says delivers in three to five days. Again, I think these are all pretty much the same. So if your goal is just compliance, like, hey, I just want to check the box of compliance, I'd probably recommend that Zing, Z-R-I-D Lite. It's a US-based company. I think they're headquartered in St. Pete, but I think this these are made in California. So that would be my recommendation. Most of these, you charge them up, and then you turn them on, and it's broadcasting with the information that you give it. And, you know, it's pretty pretty simple. And the reason I recommend these is they're all pretty light. So he had a, a DJI Mavic Mini. And as long as you fly that for recreational use, you actually don't need remote ID on it because it's pretty light. But if you're doing it for recreational use uh, and you put the remote ID module on there, it goes over the weight limit. And actually, uh, Zing has a picture of the Mavic, or I think he's got the Mini 2 or Mavic Mini here with the module on top of it. And it fits fine and nice. So small enough to fit on that very light drone and not impact the flight characteristics of it. And it works. You get your compliance, 
check that box and worry less about getting in trouble. Maybe a bit of a shorter answer today, but that's what I would recommend to him. Oh, perfect. And I, and I mean, that the Zing one makes a lot of sense. Four hours of battery life sounds pretty good. Do, you, do we know what the battery life is with the drone tag beacon? Yeah, the uh, drone tag website doesn't say, just says the battery will work for a whole, quote, flying day. So I'm not sure what that means, but, you know, maybe six hours? Who knows? I think the most annoying thing about the these beacons will just be charging them up or making sure they're charged. But if you're going to charge your drone batteries, just plug this in. Most of them have like some type of USB connector that you can plug it into and, and charge it up. So pretty simple. You get some Velcro strips and stick it on there. You're good to go. Excellent, David. Super straightforward answer to this question. Hey, if you got a drone question, we'd be happy to answer this question for you. You can go on to ydqa.io or if you're part of the Drone Launch Connect community, please type in your question there. We see questions coming through all the time. We'd love to answer these questions here on this podcast. If you're not a part of that community, check it out. You can actually find the Drone Launch Connect community through the Drone Launch Academy website. There's a little tab up at the top. Click it. You can register. It's a really cool community to be a part of. Until then, we'll see you in the sky.